I attended over 200 hiring committees in my time at Google, and there was so much confusion on this subject that I wanted to do a video that really cleared up a lot of the miscommunication, a lot of the misunderstanding. And the one thing I want you to remember is Google's hiring process is constantly changing, including this year, a few groups completely removed hiring committee. I don't know what those groups are, but still, for the most part, hiring committee is still happening. For the purpose of this video, let's refer to hiring committee as HC. It will make things a lot easier. And the goal is really for me to cover anything and everything I think would be important for you to know. So let's start with item one, which is the why. And so HC is in place for two major reasons. Item one is really to remove bias. And then item two is to make hires for the long term. Now remember the point of hiring committee is to hire you for Google, not your individual role. So they're really trying to determine fit for the long term. Also remember the bias piece, hiring managers can get tired of the interview process. They can just want it to be over. Team members can want it to be over. And that could be based on current needs, just kind of drowning from the amount of work, etc. So what does this mean? HC removes this bias if they really want to hire, if there's negative feedback, positive feedback that's too positive. The goal of HC is an attempt to get it right every single time. Item two, who part one. There's a ton of confusion on who makes it to HC. So let's clear that up right away. The candidates that make it to HC do good, very good, or great in the interview process. So I want to break this down a little further. So the ratings at Google are strong hire, higher, leaning higher, leaning no higher, no higher, and strong no higher. And those all will be used with abbreviations uh, for the purpose of internal use. If you see anything referring to a four point scale, that information is incredibly dated. I think they got rid of the four point scale. I wanna say that it was 2016, maybe early 2017, it's been a long time. So what does this mean? It means that most candidates that make it to HC, well, they got mostly lean hires, hires, or strong hires. You can have an interviewer that provides a no hire recommendation in any one of those no hire categories, but remember, it's HC's job to determine whether it was a good interview or not. And usually when you have one of those interviews, the rest of the feedback is pretty good. Why provide this data? Because many candidates think that everybody makes it to HC, but actually, the percentages are quite small. So let's take a sample set. Let's say 10 people are interviewing for one role. 10 people make it to the phone interview stage. I would say about half of those would pass to the on-site stage. And one out of five passing the on-site stage, sure, very, very common. So I would say based on these numbers, let's say about 10% make it to the HC stage. It could be less, it could be more, but that's kind of a reasonable number and reasonable way to think about it. Now, remember, even if you make it to HC and you don't get through that stage, remember, you'll get another chance uh, making it to that stage. Obviously, because of the low percentages, recruiters will come back to you over time. Now, item three is who part two. Now that we know kind of who makes it to HC, let's talk about who are the HC members. HC members are made up of a group of your potential peers. Specifically, what does this mean? Well, if you're going in and to an HC for program managers, that HC is gonna have program managers, software engineers, it will be full of software engineers, et cetera. They don't also randomly show up. These people are specifically trained to be in hiring committee and it's usually a mix. It's a mix of kind of newer hiring committee members and more tenured, more calibrated hiring committee members, but it really varies and depends based on the hiring committee. So what, and how many people are needed to be there. So quorum used to be four. They used to need at least four members to make a decision, but now quorum can be for some groups as little as two hiring committee members and for software engineers, for example, three members. And meaning of those three members, all three would need to agree to decide to move forward. Now, lastly, HC will be attended by people in similar time zones. So 
usually it's regional, right? So in the US, you could be in the Bay or you could be in New York and then EMEA, APAC. So it's really, really based on time zone. You rarely have somebody from London in an HC that's being conducted on West Coast time, for example. Lastly, HC needs somebody to lead the group. And oftentimes this actually is a recruiter. Their role is really to be a facilitator and keep everybody on track and make sure that for obvious reasons, people are just are keeping the conversation and dialogue going because discussions about one candidate can be pretty long. One other item is guests are allowed to HC with facilitator approval. Oftentimes that's somebody who's maybe a new hiring manager and wants to review what hiring committee looks like. It could be another maybe newer recruiter, newer employee who wants to see more about it. And occasionally it actually will be the hiring manager who has a candidate in hiring committee and they're there to provide additional context, additional information that just can be written in the statement of support. This isn't talked about a lot, but occasionally it does happen and they're there just to provide a little additional context. Item four is the when, part one. When does HC happen? It happens after all your interviews have been completed, but there's a few different paths you can take after your interviews have been completed. So let's talk about those paths. Path one, you're interviewing for a specific role with a specific hiring manager. Let's call it technical program manager, data center deployments. So what does that mean? It means the hiring manager is very likely a part of the interview process. And at the end, they're going to say, okay, I like this candidate and the interviewers agreed. They're going to write up a statement of support and it will be submitted to hiring committee by the recruiter. Now path two, is you're interviewing for a more generic role. Again, let's go with software engineer backend, right? And so it's gonna have more generic requirements. And if the recruiter determines you're a fit after the interviews, then you'd move into the team match stage. I'll pin the team match video that I did up there, but team matches are essentially casual 30 minute conversations with hiring managers to determine fit. Now, when a hiring manager sees you as a fit, again, statement of support, and the recruiter would submit the packet to hiring committee. Now. Path three, it's the less common and less likely path, but let's go back to path two. Let's say you're a backend software engineer and you crush the interviews. You get three or four strong hires, all the other recommendations are hires. I might just as your recruiter take you straight to hiring committee because it's pretty clear that they're gonna pass you forward. Then I could go to the hiring managers in, in the team match stage and say, hey, Jane, um, I have this great candidate. They're already HC approved. Why do it that way? Because there's a great motivation for hiring managers to talk to HC approved candidates. And I did hire software engineers and I did take this specific approach when taking them to hiring committee. Item five, when part two. So interview feedback, when is this all getting in and when is all this happening? So interview feedback should be completed in two to three days. We all know that that's rarely happening. So ideally, if you have a good recruiter, they're going to hold the interviewers accountable and they should have it in a week. And so again, for path one for designated hiring manager, if the feedback looks good, I would basically go to the hiring manager and request that they write a statement of support and I'd give them a deadline saying, hey, I'd really like to have this candidate in Tuesday's hiring committee. Can you get it to me by end of day Friday? Because typically it's at least 24 to 48 hours before hiring committee that you have to have all the information in so that hiring committee can pre-review before the meeting. And Obviously, sometimes that pre-review is happening, sometimes it's not. Lastly, you as the candidate should have no doubts on the specific day and time you will be in HC. If it's not clear, ask. I would always tell my candidates the day, the time, and I would say, I am going to call you as soon as hiring committee is over with the result. Now, for more popular roles like software engineers, lots of hiring committees. For more nuanced roles like program managers, there's going to be less hiring committees. But Typically, there are enough hiring committees that you shouldn't be waiting weeks and weeks to get in. Sometimes you won't be able to get into two or three, but usually you can get in within a week or two. Item six is the what. So what exactly is hiring committee reviewing? So your recruiter puts together a packet of information and think of it like a Google form where they can put in notes and attachments. This includes that hiring manager statement of support most of the time, um, interview feedback, 
all of it, including past interview feedback, employee referrals, internal references, all that information will go in there. Um, and of course your resume, they just want to align your resume with the feedback. Now I want to quickly address past feedback. If HC is struggling to make a decision, they will look at this past interview feedback. So it is important and sometimes, quite honestly, it will help you and sometimes it will hurt you. They are looking for improvement over time. So what exactly happens in HC? HC re reviews the information beforehand and then shows up to the meeting to discuss the information. And depending on the type of role, there's gonna be less or more packets for example, there's going to be more software engineer packets than program manager packets because it's it's a little bit more straightforward. It's a little bit more clear cut. Let's say, for example, let's give the example of nine packets in a hiring committee. Well, if we're looking at the law of averages, typically three will be pretty clear hires. Three will lean towards not hiring and three will be scrutinized heavily and need more discussion. The clear cut packets should be handled by the facilitator and hiring committee first. They usually need limited discussion because hiring committees giving initial recommendations, hire, no hire, or hold. But commonly, a lot of these decisions are actually made quickly. More than 50% they're not spending a lot of time on. But usually at least a third of the packets, maybe up to 40% of the packets, they're going to require some type of discussion. That could be five minutes, 10 minutes, up to 30 minutes I've seen on one candidate. The last piece you need to know is hiring committee does not take compensation into consideration. That's not their function. Item seven, the results. So let's go more into those results. So the kind of yes, no, or hold stages. So yes means they're going to move forward to the offer stage. There is no more executive review. They've officially removed that from the process. Yes, there used to be another stage after hiring committee. You're lucky it's not there anymore. It was another barrier. Um, no, the process really ends here. Like there's really slim to no chance that that's going to change. There's random, random cases where it does, but for the most part, no. And then hold. This means they want more data. So there's a couple of instances here. The most common instance, they just wanna see a little bit more from you as a candidate. Now the second instance is maybe the interviewer didn't take good notes. Um, maybe they didn't ask great questions. Typically when you have to, when you get a hold, you do one additional interview and it's really focused in on this specific area, GCA, RRK, et cetera. And one additional point that I've just noticed over the recent years, especially over the last couple of years, is that there seems to be more of a willingness to redo interviews before HC, which I think is a good process. So your recruiter would say, hey, the GCA was like a lean hire, but they want a little bit stronger score, so they want you to do it over. Um, I think that this is a valuable, valuable data point that this is happening a little bit more on the front end. Remember, if you do get this option, you likely did pretty well in the first one. So the big data point that everybody wants to know is what are the percentage chances of passing hiring committee? And so I'm actually going to put out a number here. I would say 33% the first time around, but that's not including holds. So if we include all the people who are given a second chance, um, let's put the percentages up to about 40%. So you have a 40% chance of passing hiring committee. So what does that mean? It's a difficult and challenging bar, and that is one of the reasons why it's so hard to get into Google. Item eight, other items. I just wanted to quickly address two other items. One, HC does have des designated times that they'll meet, but sometimes urgency, competing offers, extenuating circumstances require for them to meet offline. That does happen. So they can get quorum, meet offline, and make decisions. And I've seen a hiring decision take as few as 24 hours from interviewing to HC approval, et cetera. It's rare, but it does occasionally happen. Secondarily, there is a good feedback loop. For instance, let's say an interviewer takes bad notes or they ask a trick question. Feedback is given directly to the interviewer to improve so the next candidate can have a better experience. Good luck.